Hello guys, it's Jeff G here. So recently I just posted a video about my remaining energy gameplay and a lot of people asking what my build is. So in this video, I'll try to explain everything about it to answer those questions. Before we start, be sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel because it helps me a lot. You guys can also watch my live gameplay on Twitch at twitch.tv slash arshi. And comment down below what you guys think of the new remaining energy blade. I would love to hear your thoughts, guys. And with that said, let's just jump onto the video. So let's start with what has changed from the remaining energy engraving. They made it so that now there's no more entering death trance mode like the previous version. So basically, if you're using remaining energy engraving, you're already in the death trance mode. This results in you only have to click your Z button once instead of twice. And that millisecond changes can be the difference between landing your surge skill or not. They've also tweaked the rotation so that it feels more fluid and more compact. As far as I can tell, I can execute a full rotation in only 5 seconds or less. And each rotation can deal roughly 150 to 250 mil. The number might seem small, but keep in mind that is within the time span of 5 seconds. Imagine if you can free hit the boss for example gate 1 Akan at 50 bars, you can deal a lot at that time. And I would say the playstyle is more forgiving now, since they give 2 stacks of Maelstrom. Obviously you don't want to use both in a single rotation, but hey, if you're really unlucky, you still have a leeway. I can show you a bit of the rotation. I've only added a spare absorption right here to simulate the actual raid and also max MP increase so that I'm not running out of mana. So this is how the rotation looks like. And that is how fast the rotation could be. Now we get into skill build and tripods. I played the normal cast remaining energy blade and I've got a lot of questions regarding my skill build since it doesn't follow what the community guide says. But hey, this build works for me and I'm happy with the results so maybe you can give it a go too. I got this build from Korean players and almost all of them are using this same build with only some minor variation. I won't explain too much on skills that doesn't change after the patch and focus more on skills that actually got changed. Okay, Spin Cutter doesn't change, Earth Cleaver, you only change the level 3 tripod for more damage, therefore you can use Attack Gem on it because of this. Nar Axel doesn't change, Death Sentence, Death Sentence is actually a new skill that is recently buffed and it is a good as dps slash mobility skill the tripod that i go for is two to one you can go for excellent mobility because i've seen that variation before so it's up to your preference twin shadow twin shadow is also good buff recently and is used as a filler slash mobility skill because of its level three tripod which pushes her forward about five meters and it also has two stacks so it's nice Maelstrom, Maelstrom is also buff. Now it's level 3 tripod. It's great because it reduced cast time by 60% and gives you two stacks of Maelstrom. For Void Strike, you go for 312. The level 3 tripod changes the skill to normal activation, so faster execution. For Soul Absorber, you go 311 right here. Same as Void Strike, the level 3 tripod changes the skill to normal activation. Now for engraving, since I'm playing normal cast build, there's no reason for me to play Supercharge anymore, so I change it to Raid Captain. You almost gain full benefit from Raid Captain, since your engraving gives you 12% move speed. Maelstrom also gives you 12%, and if you have a Yearning buff, you'll have 12% more. 
So that's already 36% in total. I also scrap Curse Stall and change it to Adrenaline 3. Blade main issue is always crit, always be and forever will be. So Adrenaline 3 is nice to diminish that weakness. And lastly, I just slap in either Predator because why not? There's nothing better than that for level 1 engraving. For gems, you put damage gems on your DPS skills, which are a lot. I mean, classic remaining energy blade, I guess. So you put damage gems on Death Sentence, Soul Absorbers, Void Strike, Earth Cleaver, Twin Shadows, and also your Surge. For cooldown gems, it's the same case except Twin Shadows. Your Twin Shadow already has two stacks, so it's safe even without cooldown gems. So you can allocate that one cooldown gem somewhere else. Maybe Spin Catter, Earth Cleaver, or Dark Axle. And yeah, don't forget to put cooldown gems on your Maelstrom. A lot of people are asking why I'm not playing Blitz Rush, and I have several reasons for it. First of all, the skill is too slow for normal cast build. At least that's what I feel. I tried to use the 3 2 1 tripod build on Blitz, and it's possible to pull that off with your surge still benefits from Maelstrom. But your time window is really tight, like only 0.5 second window. In Trixion, yes, you can pull that off because the boss is not moving, but in actual raids, that is not the case. Sometimes you have to reposition or dodge dangerous pattern, meaning your time window will be shorter. So that combo, in my opinion, is so unrealistic. Well, sure, let's say you're using 3 1 1 tripod for Blitz for faster execution. Then comes the next issue. The second issue is Blitz is an angular DPS meaning you have to aim or position yourself at the back of the boss to land back attacks. Meanwhile, skill like Death Sentence is an AoE DPS skill, so it doesn't require that kind of treatment. As long as you land your Death Sentence AoE at the back of the boss, you're already landing back attacks. Thirdly, playing Blitz means you will have less mobility, compared to the Death Sentence plus Twin Shadow combo. This is just personal preference. I prefer higher mobility and consistency compared to damage. Cause in the long run, your damage overall will be high anyway if you're consistently landing back attacks. I'm not saying Blitz is bad. If you prefer to use Blitz, then it's all up to you. Like old Daddy Zeals once said, your character is your own Formula 1 car. So the treatment is different from one person to another. So the conclusion is, Normal cast remaining energy blade is a playstyle where you have to perform your rotation as fast as humanly possible. Also, good decision making is necessary to maximize her efficiency. Speed and precision is the name of the game for remaining energy blade. Keep in mind this is a high risk high reward playstyle, meaning if you miss one or two of your spells, it's game over, cause your whole rotation will be ruined. In my opinion, I think it's still safer to play as a Surge Blade compared to Remaining Energy. With that said, if you want to play Remaining Energy, it's a fun experience. She's really fast, very fluid, and very satisfying to play. At least for me, that's how I feel. You will make mistakes for sure. Even myself still make mistakes sometimes, but we learn from those mistakes. To get better and better at controlling her. Maybe in the future, you will eventually master the art of Remaining Energy Blade. That's all I will say. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the new remaining energy blade. Bye bye guys.